Well, I'm glad the Bulls got the win, but I sure as hell didn't think it was going to happen. Not with the way the Bulls started out this game. Not with the way they look completely lifeless, uninterested, and disengaged in the first half. Now, granted, second night of a back-to-back, -back, a traveling back-to-back -back at that. Bulls are down a lot of guys, also with no Dalen Terry in this one, on top of all the other guys that were already out who missed the last game. But come on now, this is the Charlotte Hornets we're talking about here. One of the worst teams in the league. And not just one of the worst teams in the NBA, but also a very short handed team without LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, and Mark Williams. Not only that, but we didn't have to worry about Terry Rozier anymore after he got traded to the Heat, a player who always seems to ball out against the Bulls. I even tweeted, I think it was midway through the second quarter after the Bulls fell down by 10, that I could already tell the Bulls were going to lose this game. They just looked checked out and didn't seem like they wanted it. The Hornets, a rebuilding team that's not even trying to win right now, they had more energy and were ready to play, more so than the Bulls were, who were fighting for a play in spot right now. But while it wasn't pretty, the Bulls buttoned up in the second half, particularly the fourth quarter, and found a way to win this game. Good locked-in defense at the end of the game. Bulls finally started showing some life, some hustle, finally started realizing, hey, we can't mess around like we did last night. They made the right plays down the stretch, started hitting their shots, got stops, and won a game they needed to win after a disappointing loss last night. I wouldn't call it a good win. I know they kept saying that on the broadcast, that it was a good win, but a win's a win. We'll take it, and the Bulls will do what they can an inching closer to that elusive 500 goal. Can't believe we're calling that a goal at this point, but here we are. Let's start with the most obvious. Huge, huge game for Kobe White. 35 points, just shy of his career high at 36. Had a chance to tie it at the end of the game, but missed a free throw. But unlike in that game where he put up 36 for his career high, Kobe also put up 7 rebounds and 9 assists. He's going to get that first career triple-double soon. It's got to happen this season. He's been getting so close in recent games, but comes up short tonight. But just an incredible showing from Kobe, who, I'll be honest, looked a little disengaged last game, and even at the start of this one. He also had some bad turnovers, one in which he just bounced the ball off his foot trying to drive to the rack. But in the second half, he really showed up, finding all kinds of ways to score, attacking the hoop, getting those reverse layups with some English on the ball. This was one of his better games in drawing contact and getting the foul line. We've talked about how we've been wanting to see that more from Kobe and actually being able to get to the foul line to generate more offense, but also getting his three-point shooting back a bit, going 4 for 10 from deep, 12 for 22 overall. Bulls needed a big game from Kobe with so many guys being out. We didn't get so much of it last night against the Raptors, so it was great to see Kobe have a bounce back game like this, and hopefully that gets his confidence back up, especially as it relates to his three-point shooting. Speaking of stepping up and having a bounce back game, how about Nikola Vucevic tonight? Now, I would have expected Vuce to be a little more aggressive considering he's going up against Nick Richards when the Hornets are without Mark Williams, but even still, Vooch was actually one of the very bright spots in the first half, ended up finishing the game with 22 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 blocks, 10 for 22 overall, but uh, I need to see Vooch stop taking threes. I know it's one of those things, well, he's got to keep shooting it until he gets out of the slump. Nah, this has been a season-long slump, and if he hasn't shot his way out of it yet, he's not going to. I know it's funny because I recently did a video where I was defending Vooch and saying he gets way too much hate from Bulls fans, and I talked about how in that video I'm predicting Vooch will finish out the year shooting 30%. Well, I've changed my mind. I don't need to see Vooch taking any more threes. Sure, maybe if he's wide open and the Bulls already have a comfortable lead, but the dude can't even hit open threes at this point. And in games like tonight where he should have the advantage down low, just stick to scoring in the paint. Use that footwork in the post and score there. Stay down at the rim to get rebounds. That's all we need. No more threes unless you really have to. Alex Caruso, great as always, was quiet in the first half, didn't actually score in the first half, but came to life in the third quarter to bring that energy back up, which the Bulls needed. AC was getting so many deflections tonight. I really wish they tracked that in the box score. Didn't have a steal tonight, but my man had three blocks. He keeps up his stroke from outside, going two for four from three, 10 points, five rebounds, three assists. And then Io picked up where he left off last night. It's really the only bright spot in that game against Toronto. Seven for 10 shooting tonight, two for five from three, 16 points, six assists, three steals, and was a team high plus 18. Just love, love this bounce back season from Io after having an underwhelming year last season. DeMar, you know, he didn't take many shots tonight, which I thought was good because Kobe was feeling it and it made more sense to feed Vooch in the paint. So he didn't really need that much of an offensive output from DeMar. Only 10 shots for him, just 15 points to go along with four rebounds and three assists. You know, there's been a lot of talk. Hey, you know, what are the Bulls going to do with DeMar DeRozan? Are they going to trade him next week so he doesn't walk in free agency? I'll likely put out a video on that because I really can't see the Bulls moving DeMar. They really, really like DeMar and value his veteran leadership and 
professionalism, probably liking him too much to a fault where they're most likely going to keep him around and extend him and then DeMar really is going to start declining and then what? But yeah, when people ask me, is DeMar gone? I really don't think so. I don't know about next season because DeMar might just leave and go elsewhere, especially if the Bulls miss the playoffs again. But if I had to take a guess, I say DeMar remains with the team for the rest of this season. He's not going to get traded next week. And then off the bench, not a lot from the Bulls, especially compared to the Hornets bench. Uh, we did get to see Terry Taylor in the game early with Daylon Terry being out. Uh, had some solid minutes for the Bulls. And then Julian Phillips was back in getting some more run. Uh, had some rookie mistakes from him. Had a turnover where he just kind of dribbled the ball right to his defender and then they took it the other direction for a dunk. I think it was Brandon Miller who made that play, but I still appreciate Phillips' hustle. Had himself a nice offensive rebound and put back. This was in the first half when it seemed like a lot of the other guys were just standing around not doing much. Uh, Drummond was also solid though, as he has kind of been really throughout this season and coming off the bench. 10 points, 8 rebounds in just 15 minutes. Good effort, good energy, and even had a couple posters in this one to get the guys up and off their feet. You know, just like in the last game, the Bulls shot above 50%. But they never really had a comfortable lead in this one, and it just goes back to the Bulls' slow pace on offense. Not getting enough shots up compared to their opponent where they have to be super efficient on offense to win the game. The Hornets had more shots than they did tonight. It was only three more, but still, it's hard to win games when you're not getting as many possessions as your opponent. 28 assists, 9 turnovers, they out-rebound the Hornets, so everything looks good where you think the Bulls won this game easily, but it's not the case. The Bulls' overall offense is just not that good. They don't play a modern style offense with pace, ball movement, and floor spacing. And that's going to be a problem until personnel changes are made to the roster. But hey, Bulls win. Unfortunately, both the Miami Heat and Orlando Magic won as well, so they don't make any traction. The standings toward the eight and number seven seeds, but one game at a time. And next up, they've got a strong opponent in the Sacramento Kings at the United Center. Looking forward to seeing how the Bulls show up in that game, who seem to take things a little more seriously against a better opponent. And after having a couple days off rest, hopefully they actually come ready to play for this game. That game will be on Saturday. I'll have some content out in the meantime. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.